Today I'm going to talk all about together time, or you might have heard it referred to as morning time, or morning basket, or family time, or all together time. If you aren't familiar with what that is, today that's what I'm going to be talking about, why we do it, and why should you do it? Um, what good is there in having a together time? If you're interested, stick around. So together time has often been referred to as morning time or morning basket. I prefer to use the term together time because you really can do it at any time throughout the day. It doesn't have to be done in the morning. It doesn't have to be done first. And it's just a time where you together as a family are going to do certain subjects together. And why I think it is important is because there aren't very many occasions, you know, with the pace of life, with the busyness of life, where you're able to learn and do these kinds of subjects together. When you are able to have your students, your children gather together and learn together, it really is, first of all, a bonding experience. And also, it's a time where you just are able to learn subjects together that you can talk about together, share together, um, you know, when you have a shared interest in a subject, when you're reading certain books together, you have that bond because you are talking and discussing certain topics of interest. And it really is a wonderful way to grow together as a family. When kids go to public school, they do all of their classes separate. They are segregated by age and grade, and they do not learn subjects with each other. And learning together is really a very different experience. Um, it really is a way of, you know, older students can help younger students, and they can really even motivate younger students to strive to do more and explore more. And younger students with their imagination can really help older students kind of see the fun and enjoyment in learning that sometimes they outgrow. So it really is a wonderful time to still be able to have some family togetherness. Um, and then students can then, the older students may go off and do their independent subjects while you spend time with the younger kids. But it really allows you to have that bonding time together Whereas a lot of other families, especially ones who don't homeschool, don't have that together time. And they don't often have times where they are really talking and talking about subjects that matter and things like that. So it is a purposeful, intentional time where you can choose subjects and books that you want to do together as a family. So another really good reason that together time is very helpful is when you are just feeling like you are not able to fit everything in. You want to do all the subjects, but there, there is just no time. You know, often subjects are tailored to, per grade and you're like, how can we do all these subjects with all of my five or six children? Or even if you just have two, how do you get it all in? And when you have together time, you're really killing two birds with one stone. You're first of all doing group subjects together, but morning time or together time, it's done in a way where you're just doing them a little bit quicker. You might not be doing this whole focused, drawn out, you know, um, thing. You're just reading the books, you're reading certain segments of them, and you're doing, you know, in our together time, we like to do multiple things all in one segment of time. Um, sometimes we take 30 minutes in the past. This past year, we only did a 30 minute together time. This coming year, I think we're gonna aim for maybe more like 45 minutes to an hour and try to get through a few more subjects that we can do more quickly and efficiently and still do them all together and all be um, on the same page and talking about the same topics and having the same discussions. So those are the two reasons why I think together time are excellent. You really get to have some purposeful, intentional family time um, where your kids are learning together and you're able to discuss all the same topics together. And it really kind of helps with burnout where you are not feeling like you're able to get all the subjects in. 
You could just have a basket where you would loop through different books throughout the week and just sit together, sit on the couch, sit around the table, wherever it is you'd like to gather, and just read those books to your kids and you're really getting through many subjects. You can do so many subjects this way and you really, um, you're still covering the subjects. You might not go into them as in depth, but it's a really a great opportunity when you're feeling burnt out or in seasons when you're just struggling to find time to fit it all in. Having everything loop through a morning time is just a really efficient way to get some things done and still feel like you're covering everything for your students. So last year for our together time, we really just did um, Bible, um, a little bit of poetry, and then we would just do our read alouds and we would always do a fun read aloud. So we had different books that we were reading and we would just keep working through those books in that 30 minute um, together time. This year, I would like to try to add in a few more things because our year is getting a little bit busier. There are a lot more subjects and books that I was really excited to do this coming year and we weren't able to fit them all in. So I would like to, I'm going to attempt to loop in various subjects each day of the week. Now this year we will only have four days to do together time because on Fridays we will be at our co-op pretty much all day from early morning until the, the afternoon. So our together times are, I'm aiming for four days a week to have together times. Now we always start our day with Bible and we are, we've been working through, slowly working through this book. It's called, um, it's called Exploring the Bible. Um, a Bible reading plan for kids. And it goes from Genesis to Revelations, but it does leave out some of those more difficult passages that sometimes you're not sure whether you should be covering them with younger um, listeners. So it does do an overall general approach. It covers all the books of the Bible and just leaves out a few of those more difficult passages and stories. And it has questions that you can ask them like review questions and things like that. It's just very basic. Um, we have been enjoying it and we really have been trying to just do a whole general overview of the whole Bible. And once we finish that, we are gonna kind of hone in to a deeper dive, deeper studies into different um, Bibles, uh, books of the Bible. So once we finish that, that will be, we'll do a deeper dive. But overall, I wanted to do an overall kind of perspective of the entire Bible from front to cover with my students and then go to the deeper dive. So we're still working on this. Uh, we probably will finish this up this coming year and then next year would be a deeper dive. So next we're going to be doing, um, so Bible, we're going to then do a poetry reading and I'm going to be reading poetry from this book. It's called The Death of the Hat. It's a compilation of many different uh, poems and poets but it's a brief history of poetry over different 50 objects, it says. But what it does is it breaks down poetry from different periods of history. So it has Middle Ages, the early Middle Ages, the high Middle Ages, the Renaissance period, the Enlightenment, the Romantic period, Victorian period, and all the way up to contemporary. So we're gonna be doing kind of a historical look at poetry over the year and we're gonna be reading many passages of poets. We'll focus on one poem a day, um, and so that will give us an opportunity to read many poems, and just it's just a poetry reading. We won't be discussing the poem. We just read it, allow that to kind of sink in. It's just to really have a taste of the poetry, the different styles. We may sometimes, sometimes I like to talk about who the poet is, and the period that they wrote their poem in, but we're not really doing an analysis of poetry at this stage in our homeschool. After that, we are gonna be doing our recitation and recitation is through the Alviary. Uh, they will have different recitation uh, passages uh, to use, which will be from our Shakespeare or Bible recitation and poetry and things like that. And we'll mostly be doing Bible and Shakespeare. After that, so those are gonna be the three staple things that we're going to do every for every together time. And that, and then I'm going to begin looping in different subjects. So there are four different things that I plan to do. First, so 
The Alviary had a ton of wonderful science books to choose from, but because we are doing our own science curriculum this year, I didn't want to miss out on some of these books. So we're going to be reading, um, and, and I will pick and choose. We may not get through all of these books, but we'll begin reading through a book, read as far as we can until it's the end of our together time and pick up where we leave, where we left off the following week. So one day a week we'll be focused on science and natural history. Um, for science, we'll be reading about Galileo and all of his discoveries. And this is a book from National Geographic that will talk about his um, biography as well as his discoveries. We're going to read this book uh, called Breakthrough Blue Babies, and it's the scientific discovery of a uh, surgical operation that saved um, infants with congenital heart defects. And then I have several of these uh, scientists in the field, so we'll just pick and choose ones that the kids are interested in reading. I have uh, Life on Circe, it's uh, Iceland's Upstart Island, uh, Mission to Pluto, the first visit to an ice dwarf, and the Cooper Belt, The Wolves and Moose of Isle Royale, Royal, uh, Restoring an Island Ecosystem, and the frog scientists. So these are all scientists in the field. You're following their study and research and they have you know wonderful pictures and things like that um, to make it more interesting for the kids. So the next thing that I want to loop through and I don't know what order I plan to do this in and we may play it by ear. We may be like, today feels like a science day so we'll do science, but I want to do each one four days out of the week and sometimes I'll even allow my, let my kids choose which one do you want to do today, but we do have to get the four things in. Um, the next thing that we will be doing are different math games. So because it's hard to, I find it's hard to squeeze math games in at any time in this homeschool day. Friday nights we do board games, but we tend to want to just do our fun board games and not do math games. So we will make one part of our morning or together time math games. This is one of the examples. This is Adzumudi. I showed this in another video, but my idea for morning time would be that I would give my kids um, a selection of cards and they would have to work through and figure out how many they can get through to, to solve the math problems. And once they get through those cards, you know, we can all kind of, who can do them the fastest, you know, give a little challenge and then we would be done. That would be our math and or, or other um, math games that we have, but we would do a math game as part of our together time. So then the next thing that we would be looping into our together time is our Christian apologetics. Last year we read A Case for Christianity. This is by J. Warner Wallace, and this is another part, book in his series, God's Crime Scene for Kids, Investigate Creation with a Real Detective. So this is another series that is written for a younger age. I would say, probably maybe eight and up. My younger daughter does track along with it as well. So we read this and we'll just, it we took about a year to read the last one because it can go into quite deep ideas and we'll go through it slowly and talk about them. And so this will be the book we'll read this coming year. And then finally, we like to do a family fun read aloud. Um, we've already begun this, but we're gonna, we've are gonna we kind of paused it for the summer, so we may go back and start it again, but we are reading Lord of the Rings. Last year we read The Hobbit by J.R. Tolkien, and we loved it, and I'm so excited to share my passion for J.R. Tolkien's books. Um, and so we are going to be reading The Lord of the Rings, uh, The Fellowship of the Ring, part one, um, this coming year and a few other books as well but this is one of the books that we will read throughout the year during our morning time and it would be done about once a week for read alouds we also read at night before bed um, i read a family read aloud and then i individually read to my kids not every night of the week but um, to my younger every night of the week but my older daughter every once in a while she likes to read to herself but sometimes i'll say okay i'm gonna read to you tonight and we are working through our own books together but that is a really um, easy way to squeeze in a few more subjects or things that you really wanted to be able to fit into your homeschool, but you just can't find the time. I find it's a really fun and efficient way. You don't really have to focus in and do assignments and all these things along with them. You can just have fun reading the books together and you know discussing them if you know there's time for that. 
Um, in the past, I found 30 minutes of morning time was enough to kind of squeeze that in. We're probably gonna try to stretch it out just a little bit longer to maybe 45 minutes to maybe even upwards of an hour for some of the days, but I don't even know if that's necessary, we'll see. And during morning time or together time, I'll also give my kids, you know, like they're, um, they often like to draw as they're listening along, you know, sketch and things like that. And I'll let them do that while they are listening to the passages as I read. But that's all I have for you. I hope that you got something from that that you might that might help you in your homeschool year. I know that many of you have already started your homeschool year or some of you are starting soon. So these are just a few ideas of how you could make your homeschool more efficient and fun and how you can just try to squeeze in a few more wonderful books into your homeschool this coming year. I thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.